All right, let's focus on the key advance of opioids because we know that, and this is an, an ASAP policy. These are the policies that ask a clinical question, a group of people get together, they find what literature they can to support a particular recommendation. And this one focuses on opioid use in the ER. And we know that opi the opioid epidemic is a real deal. It is absolutely real. We see all kinds of problems with it in all spheres of our, of our society, but definitely in the emergency department. So we have a role in this on how we manage it. So the first question they ask in this particular ASAP policy is, in adult patients with opioid withdrawal, is buprenorphine as effective as the other strategies to manage that person with opioid withdrawal? And we see people with opioid withdrawal in the ER, right? We do it all the time. People that come in for, uh, they've been in a car crash and they're opioid dependent and they start to get the shakes and they get the piloerection and they tell you they're withdrawing from opioids. We know that happens. This isn't heroin addicts anymore. This is your neighbor. This is just anybody that happens to be addicted to opioids. The recommendation by ASAP in this policy is to treat opioid withdrawal. When you see that person who says, I'm withdrawing, I, I take Vicodin every day or Percocet every day and I am withdrawing, um, that person should be treated in the ED with either buprenorphine or methadone. Not the other stuff that we try. We try alpha blockers, we try antimedics, we try all kinds of other things, but to be honest, those are not particularly effective. So what we really should be doing is biting the bullet and doing the right thing and treating with something like methadone or buprenorphine. And preferentially, if you can, and you know how, and the reality is in an ER, anyone can do this. You need no special certification at all. You can use buprenorphine. So buprenorphine is recommended to treat these people who are having opioid withdrawal in the ER and avoid the things that are not either methadone or buprenorphine. Now, question number two is if you have somebody who has an acutely painful condition, so I broke my ankle, is it okay to have a short course of opioids at discharge? What's recommended here in this particular ASAP guideline is to preferentially avoid, if you can, um, not, or preferentially prescribe non-opioids. So if you can, if you can get someone's pain controlled with, say my ankle is broken, with a splint or a, a splint usually from the ER, elevation, some ice, and maybe a non-steroidal, where my pain is controlled with that, maybe that's all I need. So maybe I don't need the opioids. See how people do, depending on the degree of pain that they have and what the condition is that you're treating. Um, for acutely painful conditions, we can often get away with a non-opioid. And if you do need an opioid, I, you know, it's just killing me. I just can't stand it. You know, it's just terrible. Um, then you can go ahead and do short course, short acting, short course. So not these things that are super duration kinds of meds, just short acting, um, relatively mild opioids that we use for those particular conditions. And it kind of makes sense, honestly, to do this in sort of an, a sequential manner. It's what the World Health Organization recommends in treating pain. And opioids are kind of the last ditch effort. Some people will need them, but in that case, don't prescribe 50 of them. And we know we're, we don't do that. Anyway. We, a, a short course, the short acting kinds of opioids. Now, what if somebody's a chronic patient who has pain, a chronic pain person, but non-cancer? Again, we know cancer is a whole separate thing. No one with cancer pain should have pain. We need to treat cancer pain. But there are a lot of people who have chronic painful conditions that come in with an exacerbation of that chronic painful condition. You know, what do we do with those? Can we use a short course of opioids in those people? It is specifically recommended to not routinely prescribe opioids to treat an ex acute exacerbation of chronic non-cancer pain. We know that that is one of the groups that ends up with significant problems with opioid addiction. So to not contribute to that problem, we, it is not recommended. The non-opioid therapies, there's lots of them you should use um, sort of alternative. And we're, we're getting much better at all of the kinds of things we can do that are non-opioid treatments. We have a whole litany of them now, anything from acupuncture to topicals to, you know, for chronic dental pain, we do dental blocks. There's just lots of options. There are nerve blocks. There's tons of stuff out there. So now we have lots of options for this. So non-opioids are the really way to, the way to go if you can. If you just can't get away with having, you know, you have to do an opioid. This is the only thing that's going to work. You're going to start with the lowest possible indicated dose and a short acting opioid for the shortest time possible. And again, our goal here is to not have people get addicted or not contribute to their addictive problem, but not have people suffer. And I think there's ways to do that. Now, the fourth recommendation here is say it's somebody who has an acute back strain. So it's acute pain. You have short, you, you think they need opioids, short course opioids, and you think they need the muscle relaxants. And think about it. We do this all the time, right? We said we have acute exacerbation of back pain, um, or they, they are acute episode of back pain, and we give them sort of the, all our triple therapies in the ER, which now we know we probably shouldn't start with opioids at all. We should avoid them if we can to see if we can get people's pain under control without an opioid. Should we be basically giving those to be discharged with people with? The reality here is no, and they're pretty strongly worded in this. Do not 
routinely prescribe or knowingly cause to be co-prescribed simultaneous opioids and benzos. And the reason for this is those two medicines together can be lethal. We, we know that, right? We know the combination of those two things can kill people. And people who end up addicted to these medicines can end up inadvertently ending up taking too much. So we just don't want that to happen. So we really want to, as strongly as possible, avoid an opioid plus a muscle relaxant or some sort of sedative hypnotic with those two medicines together. So, so don't do those together. So we're going to basically... If people that are opioid withdrawing, we're going to do use buprenorphine or methadone. People who come in with acute exacerbation, you know, an acute a pain episode, we're going to try everything non-opioid first. If we really need an opioid, it's going to be short course, low dose, short, you know, that's it. If it's somebody who's chronic non-cancer pain that's exacerbating, we're going to try everything short of opioids. And again, if we have to use opioids, short course, short acting. And then we're going to really avoid at all costs adding muscle relaxants to anybody who's on an opioid. Read the question carefully when they do the exam on this, but you got this. This one's pretty straightforward.